We last checked in with Gears 5 back around the launch of the Series X and Series S consoles. The Coalition updated the game with a lot of new visual features and performance improvements, but there were still a few outstanding issues which we discussed in that video. Since then, however, we now have a new single-player DLC release called Hive Busters, along with a patch that basically promises to fix every one of our complaints. But first, to discuss all of this, I am joined by the one and only Richard Ledbetter. Hey John, pleasure to be here. Really looking forward to seeing what you've got to say about this, because uh, obviously you've been quite vocal in our support for the Coalition and Gears 5, which is an excellent game, brilliant on last gen, even more refined on next gen. So yeah, this, this DLC should be a real statement of intent. Can't wait to see what you got for us. Yeah, and you know, we'll talk more about the DLC in a moment, but I do want to say, for those that are curious, this is basically a single-player expansion pack. So it follows a new cast of characters through a new adventure in new locations, and I really like to see this stuff, and it kind of feels like we've been uh, treated well this year, because for, we have this, obviously, in Gears 5, but Doom Eternal also received its first single-player DLC pack, which was also excellent. Uh, I'm really happy to see this kind of content coming out, especially when, as we'll see in a moment, uh, there's a, obviously still a lot of production work that goes into creating this stuff. So there's some very impressive um, set pieces within. Now, obviously, with the holiday coming up, this video is going to be relatively short and sweet. We'll be discussing the DLC, of course, but first, I want to talk about the patch, because I think this stuff is really important. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, so... Let's rewind first, back to my original video. Basically, there were three main issues that I pointed out. Uh, the first being stutters and frame rate drops that occurred when exploring the open world areas of the game. So this is the snowy area or the desert area, uh, where you're on this sort of like skiff sliding around the world. Lots of frame rate drops that I noticed. Nothing huge, but it did rob the game of some fluidity. Uh, second, there were the cutscenes between actual frame cuts in each scene you'd get a second or like a duplicate frame basically which would give you the impression of sort of a juddery uh, skipping in the playback as you're watching the cutscene so it was a little bit jarring and this was also a problem on pc thirdly then and this is something i kind of figured out after that initial video went live so i don't even have capture of this but there was basically an area in chapter four that i encountered when i was replaying the game on series x where um after you're lift up on a car by the coal train uh the frame rate just drops hard it starts to stutter like crazy it was really bad i even loaded it up on the one x and it drops the game to like 30 frames per second or so which was definitely not how it ran when I first played it on the One X. Uh, so I raised this issue with the Coalition as well. And today, we have answers to all three of these things. <laughs> okay, well, let's go and uh, take a look at each of those issues. But yeah, I think we should stress there that it was actually fine in the original release of the game, but I think in the uh, extensive uh, conversion work for series uh, consoles, these issues kind of cropped in later on, right? Yeah, and some of them, like the, the stutters and drops in the open world, uh, I've learned that those were caused by uh, the transition to the low latency stuff. Right, got and it. Just some other some other things that happened, because, you know, they made so many changes to the engine, so I, I get it. Uh, well, the good news is that all of these issues have been solved. So, first of all, the open world areas here, going through the desert, I just sort of drove around here on my skiff for a while, letting the game play out as you do, and it's a completely flat 60, which is how it should be. This is now smoother than it ever was on 1X, because you could still get dips out here in the open world, it's smoother than it was at launch on Series X, uh, and it feels great to play. And this is obviously without VRR enabled. So, first one, complete success. Secondly, the cutscenes. Um, those duplicate frames that appeared between camera cuts have been fixed as well. Uh, you'll still occasionally get a missed frame or two if you look closely during the cutscene playback, but by and large, all cutscenes now play out at a basically flawless 60 frames per second, which when you consider how impressive these sequences really are, uh, it's impressive to see. It looks really good. Yeah, it's kind of like the last layer of polish on, on what is an already really impressive presentation, I guess. Precisely. Uh, and then lastly, 
Um, this is the area I was talking about. Um, and yes, this now also runs perfectly fine as it should. Uh, you know, it's now even smoother than it was originally on the one X and it doesn't have that, whatever was causing the glitch, maybe a memory management issue or something else going on, whatever that has also been fixed. So I really think it's important to step back and look at this situation and also look at some of the other games we've talked about recently. And this is kind of a, a sort of a demonstration of why sometimes our critiques, which I know some people will hear them and they will not be happy that we've critiqued their favorite console. But this is an example of why I think this can be important. Uh, because as I said in those, that original video, we did share this information with the coalition. We always try to do this. When we encounter issues with games, we want to share the information back with the developers. And it's multiple times now, we've heard back from them uh, that they were looking into issues, and in most cases, these issues have been corrected, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is really important because, um, I don't know, there's, there's kind of like a... Uh, a sort of, I don't know, something happening in a lot of the technical press where it's kind of like almost highlighting gotchas. And uh, I think that's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine to critique a piece of software. But I do think um, that if you find these issues, you know, rather than sort of storing up the information, then unleashing it to the public uh, and the developer simultaneously, there's no harm whatsoever in funneling back that information to the developer so they get a bit of a heads up. They know what's coming, but more to the point, they can actually uh, begin the process of replicating the issue and addressing it. Uh, or maybe feeding information back to us on how we might have got something wrong, which is, you know, equally uh, potentially an issue. So there have been a number of scenarios since the next gen launches where we've actually done this. The 120 hertz issue on the PlayStation 5 version of Devil May Cry 5. We highlighted that to Capcom like a week, I think, before the video went live. That that was addressed. Then there's the whole sort of Dirt 5 situation, which, um, you know, all of the issues that we uh, put forward in the video, yes, you know, they weren't addressed by the time the video went live. So we did publish the information, but the developer had the heads up and those issues are being worked on. So I think this is important, not just in showing consumers how the games run, but also in potentially helping to make them better sooner rather than later which is the ultimate goal here you know i think we all want to see the games running at their best on all consoles the reason we point out stuff like frame rate drops and screen tearing is we don't like those artifacts and a lot of other people don't either you know this stuff is is not the thing you want to see and highlighting it in a way in a constructive fashion and sharing this information i think is helpful sometimes you know obviously uh this whole conversation can get crazy if you start thinking about QA and all that. And this is kind of a completely separate issue. Uh, but either way, thus far, I think it's looking good for this new generation. And we've seen several successes and improvements. Uh, and also, you know, again, it's worth considering that releasing software this year specifically during a pandemic year, during a console launch, it's very difficult to get this stuff finished and polished on time. Um, so definitely, yeah, it's, it's great to see so many games continuing to improve and, you know, this wasn't a problem, but I also just looked at Spider-Man remastered, uh, which received a 60 frames per second ray tracing mode, um, along with Miles Morales. Again, that's another example of features being added post launch to improve the overall experience. So things are, are, are getting better and it's looking up, which is great, but uh, I, you know, we should also, while we're here, I think it's important, I've been showing some of the footage here, but we should talk about the DLC for this game, Hive Busters, because this is, this is really great to see single player content. And it's uh, one of the rare times where you have a cast of characters that is, again, kind of a side cast and completely different than the main storyline, uh, but similarly entertaining. And this one really takes, takes the, the team to a completely different locale. Uh, it starts actually where you're dropped onto an island, but you're kind of mostly fighting in and around these more tropical-like environments, which is kind of different from anything in any prior Gears game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess Gears 5 kicks off with that rather lush first first mission, uh, but beyond that, you don't really see anything else like this, and it's, it's kind of a refreshing thing. Definitely. If anything, it actually kind of reminded me of uh, Uncharted 1 in a way, and, and I mean that in a positive sense. Like, it just has that deep jungle kind of like deep greenery kind of look with some ancient ruins and 
I mean, that's not to say there's not still some uh, more gears esque things. There's some facilities you explore, and there's and I guess what really impresses me is that you know, again, as a DLC, there's some very cool set pieces in here. Like there's this one instance where uh, a door to this facility, this huge metal door, is basically blown off its hinges and thrust down into this river of lava. And you spend the next like ten minutes essentially. <laughs> riding this piece of metal like a raft down a river of lava while fighting enemies along the way. Uh, and it's just it's just a cool scenario, and it's the kind of stuff that I think Gears is really well known for. And to see something like large-scale like this in a DLC pack is kind of impressive, and I, I really like it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, this is actually available not just for series consoles, but also on the prior gen as well. And I think actually uh, the Coalition, alongside uh, what Insomniac have done with Marvel Spider-Man, actually, they've really got the balance right in kind of straddling the generations. So if you've got the old consoles, you still get a good experience, no doubt about it. But, you know, these guys are leveraging the next gen features. And it's great to see that. It's great to see that kind of scalability across the generations where you, you do still feel you're getting your bang for the buck from the next generation machines. But the last generation machines are still pretty well catered for. That's right. And also the PC, which uh, apparently looking at the patch stuff, it seems I haven't had a chance to test this yet because the download is so large. But it looks like the PC has now received the Series X features uh, and oh, wow. the various fixes as well. So... The PC version has been brought up to spec too, which again, wow. that's great. So the, this product feels very well supported around all edges. There's lots of great content in there, single and multiplayer. Um, they've done a really good job with this release, I think. And uh, it's something mm -hmm. I really want to say that, you know, this is the kind of thing I like to highlight. It's just like a success all around. And I feel like the game has been left in a very, very good state. It's extremely polished. Mm -hmm. The content here is a lot of fun. Um, and it works well across all generations of machines that it's supported on. Definitely. Uh, I guess for my money, I'm just more curious to see now, you know, what are they going to be up to next? Uh, Co <laughs> the Coalition's clearly one of the most impressive studios Microsoft has doing games for the Xbox. I mean, they're delivering a very high level of visual fidelity with each release and have mastered the art of Unreal Engine. So... Yeah, that's the other thing. Something that's really impressive is just, you know, pretty much from Gears 4, the utilization of Unreal Engine 4 has just been way ahead of what we've seen from other titles using the technology. And it's great to see that persist into the next generation as well. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see what uh, the Coalition have got cooking up next. Yeah, hopefully something with Unreal Engine 5. But, yeah, so that's all for this one. I just wanted to do a quick video on it to highlight, you know, the great-looking DLC and patches to the game that have improved it. So between Gears 5 and the Spider-Man games, it's nice to see titles continue to evolve and improve, uh, even well after release. Yeah, and one more thing, John. Uh, this DLC is available on Game Pass as well, so it's not a bolt-on purchase if you're a Game Pass subscriber. You actually get it as part of Game Pass. That's actually that's a very good point as well, and this this kind of makes sense since you couldn't get this as part of a physical disc anyways. Uh, so yeah, adding extra content like this, it's a really smart thing. Uh, so yeah, if you have it, check it out. I can recommend it. Uh, but that's going to do it for now, so thanks for joining me, Rich. It's been a pleasure. And if you guys enjoyed it, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, follow us over on Twitter, and check out the original version of the video over on our Patreon if you're so inclined. Uh, but until next time, this is John and Rich signing off. Thank <laughs> you.